Hey friends, subscribers, strangers, anybody who may come across this channel, let me just start off by saying hear me out. I have a point to make. <laughs> I'm starting this for the second time, and uh, to be honest, I rarely restart a video, but I found this topic to be so important, in my opinion, that I thought it was worth sharing properly. And what happened was I got in the middle of a discussion about a channel I'd watched and some advice some guy was giving, and I totally had a brain fart. And I thought about this as maybe I should just continue on. But uh, uh, starting over, I wanted to make better points here. I wanted to talk to everyone, but specifically to young men out there who are so just disenfranchised by the entire situation that they face you know uh, it's not it's very complicated and the topic is I think of the utmost importance and so that's what I was I was thinking about how this video to me is one of the most important topics out there but it won't come across that way to everyone and unless a person is really facing this kind of hardship in their own life they won't get it and most young men, I think, do get it. If you don't know where I'm coming from when I get into this discussion, then maybe you just haven't reached that point yet where you're having your own crisis about what it means to be a human, what it means to be a man, what it means to be a responsible citizen, a family. I, as a father of three boys, my wife and I have raised uh, one child. He's 27. We have two that are... Uh, 10 and 13 and so yeah I've been pretty busy both of us since you know our early my early 20s I met her when she had a son he was three years old so I took him on as my stepson and raised him and let me just say when I was thrown into that role I was forced to be a man it taught me that I had to take on new responsibilities but at the same time I had a lot of childish notions in my mind about you know, just uh, being able to get ahead quickly, starting other side side businesses rather than just working hard towards one goal and fighting this idea that I know what's better and eventually I'll be happier if I don't work for some for some nine to five job that I don't want. And I wrestled with this for so many years, and it made me feel like less of a man because I wanted to be the provider. Meanwhile, my wife made, has always made great money. She's a server. And uh, waitresses make great money. You can't deny that. But in Washington State, we also make wage. You know, there are places in the South, and a lot of people don't realize this, where waitresses get like $2 an hour. Uh, because as a server, you're not required to pay minimum wage. Uh, it's crazy, and I find it to be just disgusting. Uh, but... They only work for tips in a lot of places. So when you get both wage and tips, that helps. And so it always made me feel like less of a man because I didn't make more. But in the back of my mind, I knew that wasn't true. Because often I was staying home. For example, when my other kids were young, taking care of them. Instead, um, I, I threw my back out in 2008 or nine horrible sciatica couldn't even stand up you know for like weeks if not months on end until it recovered made a lot of videos about it at that time and uh i really uh, when i had my what my se second episode in like 2013 12 13 and i had to quit carpentry and i quit for a few years started a kratom business then i moved back into carpentry now i'm building tiny homes and just being more careful and I'm feeling that connection with what I feel like I need to do, which is work. And I don't mean mindless work or labor. I mean a person actually working at a trade, doing something that they like, and that so many young men feel like that's something they want to do, yet don't do it. I would want to start off here by saying if you're young, go into the trades. If you're, you know, in your teens or late 20s, hell, it doesn't matter how old you are. 
go in and learn some carpentry. You can actually do some apprenticeships with people for reasonable wages. And um, it doesn't take long if you're, you know, intuitive and bright to pick it up. Mind you, there are some dumbass motherfuckers out there. I'm not going to deny that. You know, we live in a real world where some people are just stupid and they can't figure shit out. And that's hard for the rest of us because you don't want to, like, put them down or fire somebody because they're too dumb. But, you know, we've done it. My boss did it a couple months back. Um, some guy we hired, he was just too dumb, too slow. And that's hard. But... My point of mentioning that is because this is for the rest of you. You know, I'm sorry for the people who have a hard time and they have to figure it out a different way. But for the people who have a mental faculty that allows them to actually push forward and learn new things, I highly urge you to take on new trades and something that's very, you know... <laughs> I'm listening to what I just said a minute ago, and it sounded like such an asshole thing to say. Like, sorry for you dumb people, but here, you know, this... But, you know, I try to be honest. And I, I I've truly believe that honesty is the best policy all the time. And just because I say something doesn't mean it's true, doesn't mean it's right, it doesn't mean others will accept it. But that brings me to our next point. When I say a word... You know, a person's going to perceive it a certain way. When I make a statement or a claim, same thing. This is one of the biggest issues I think we're having with young men and women who are so obsessed with language that they get angry at people for what they say without trying to understand intention. And the reason I bring this up is because you know, being a, a good man often for some people means fighting for what's right. And I think that that's pretty universal. If that's the case, then if people don't understand what truly is right, they're going to fight for causes they don't even understand. And there's kind of this ridiculous, you know, pointless cycle of pointing the fingers at other people and trying to find somebody to blame for all the problems, and misunderstanding what people say, and not allowing them to clarify. For example, you know, anything that happens to Joe Rogan, or anyone else for that matter. So, I'm the kind of guy who listens to every angle. I was listening to this guy earlier, this Christian cowboy, he has these this uh, Dry Creek Wrangler School. It's this old guy, and he. I just I watched a couple of his videos. Just found him recently. Really smart old man who just you know is talking to younger people. And I was thinking about how you know once he mentioned he was a Christian, and he told me some of his opinions are of course based on literal interpretations of the Bible. It's hard to be like, well, wait a minute, have you really? You know, I, I've got to be more cautious about the lessons he's giving, right? He's he's a little, he's quite controversial about the trans culture and the, the whole, you know, he's this, just an old schooler, right? And I thought about this. I listened to him and I like the guy. I might not agree with everything he says, but I like the guy. And I was going through some of the different people that I listen to that are more controversial, um, Ben Shapiro. Can't stand the guy, but I listen to him, and he's very smart. I enjoy what he has to say a lot of the time. And then maybe like 15-20% of the time, it's just so cringe. I'm just like, oh my god, right? Jordan Peterson. A lot of what he's had to say to young men has helped them, but also very shallow and, you know, basic. He's trying to bring it into the Bible, and it's just becomes kind of mindless drivel. But there's a lot to offer because people find benefit in it. Um, some of the more controversial characters on the left and the right and the center um, should all be listened to. When I hear people talk about Joe Rogan, for example, I love that guy. I couldn't stand him for the longest time. 
I grew up in the 80s and 90s, and Fear Factor was a very popular show. And I remember watching it and thinking, God, this guy's a dumbass. I can't stand him. And when he started his podcast, I was like, what? He's He got into martial arts, and now he's making a podcast? I listened to so many episodes of Joe Rogan. Not not the martial arts ones, but some of them are interesting. But the point being, uh, through him, of course, I found like Lex Friedman, and he's dry as hell and boring as hell. There are two podcasters who, it's not about them. It's about what they do. They bring in all different types of people to have conversations. And the point I'm getting at here is that I think that being a strong man means you listen to other men, even if you don't agree with them. That you don't point the finger at entire groups of people you don't know and say, oh, you're a bunch of libtards, or oh, a bunch of conservative idiots. Like, on both sides, we have boys pretending to be men, arguing on Twitter, fighting in the forums, and it's pathetic. That's not anything what I was taught to being a man. It means going out and living your life to the fullest as much as you possibly can, reaping the happy moments, but at the same time, understanding we will suffer, and being able to be thrown out naked in the snow with nothing, and, uh, you know, figure your shit out. So many people pull this kind of clout card. On a final note here, I think this is important for all the young guys out there who think that you can chase clout, you can get a bunch of money, and you can be rich, you can drive a sports car and wear stupid fucking diamond-studded sunglasses and be happy. Well, let me just say, I can't tell you you won't be happy, but I can say that if a person needs to seek that kind of wealth and attention just to feel good about themselves they might want to step back a little bit and realize what's really missing, which is stepping out, going on a walk, going out in nature, hugging a tree, hiking the trails, seeing butterflies, washing your face in a stream. The riches of nature are so much more plentiful, and that sounds so cheesy, but it's true. If you base your life on accruing wealth, You'll never be happy. You just won't. The reason I know this is because from everything I've looked at, nobody's ever truly happy. We're all seeking something. We're all chasing the dragon. Even people who want to be tougher or manlier or, you know, a <laughs> more intense activist or um, I'm more Christian than you. It's a competitive nature we have. And I think ultimately it comes down to what's in our heart learning how to cope with situations, dealing with emergencies, and uh, ultimately how we cope with our lives is going to, you know, determine a lot. So I guess I'll leave it at that. Um, just had to ramble for a little bit. You know, who am I to tell you what being a man is or being anything? Well, I'm another man, and uh, I think I have just as much of a right to determine that as any other man. So, right on, man. Peace out. By the way, uh, this was going to be a podcast, but I can't find my microphone in this mess. So, uh, I need to get that going. And um, I decided that uh, I uploaded my last podcast to uh, my 15-minute free thinking podcast, which the description... The link should be somewhere in my videos. I'm not very organized these days. I just kind of post them from my phone because my camera's fucked up and yada, yada, yada. You don't want to hear my sob story. So, 15-minute uh, free thinking is the podcast. There was one about authenticity recently, and uh, I think I'm getting close to like 100 podcasts on there. I'd really appreciate support, um, at least people listening to them uh, who haven't heard them before. Give it a shot. Because I'm not sure whether I want to continue. You have to pay to host your own podcast. And it's kind of expensive, so I don't know. I guess I'll just keep doing it for now. But, yeah, I'm not making a living off the internet, obviously. But, uh, 
maybe in the future. We'll see. Maybe if I get off my ass and actually, like, do something cool. I could put a big green screen behind me with naked ladies. Ooh, then I'd be a real man. I could have them in bikinis with, like, limos full of cash. Oh, wait, sorry, Bentleys. Oh, wait, no, what's the cool car now? Oh, God, who fucking cares? Alpha males. The most pathetic. Talk to you later.